what's up, All everybody, right. and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. I promise you, we got a real special guest on tonight. This brother did over 33 years in prison, but I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let him tell you who he is, where he's from, kind of where he did his time, and a little bit about his situation. Jesse, the mic's yours, man. Tell the people who you are, man, where you're from. My name's Jesse James. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I went to prison in 1989 for armed robbery and uh, did many years in Georgia prison system. Did, it, did you do uh, 33 years straight? Yes, sir. 33 years straight for the armed robbery? Armed robbery. For armed robbery and a few, you know, things that happen in the, inside the walls tend to lead to a little bit longer and longer and longer. You know how it goes, but, you know, uh, it's part of it, brother. I know how it goes, but the people watching the videos might not know how it goes. So I want to ask you, when you got arrested in 1989, what was your sentence? Armed robbery. I had uh, 24, I had 24 counts of armed robbery. That's kind of where the name Jesse James comes from. That, that was the name that was given to me when a background check was run on me. The, uh, so how much time they sentenced you to in years for them armed robberies? 11 life sentences. 11 life sentences in the state of Georgia. 11 life sentences in the state of Georgia. How old were they you? I was 19. I'm 53 now. So you went in at 19, you get out when you're 53 years old. <laughs> yeah, that's about the gist of it. Yeah. Um, at the time that I went in, there was very few whites in the in prison in Georgia like that, you know. Uh, they sent me to Alto, which was the, at the time, I believe it was like the seventh, seventh roughest prison in the United States. And uh, that's where that, that's where it began. And, uh, so we hear a lot of stuff. It, we hear a lot of stuff about prisons, how they were back then. And, you know, dudes coming in were getting raped back then. They were stabbing back oh, then. They were. Oh, yeah. How was it? Oh, yeah. Tell the people. It was it was. Uh, it was one of those things that as soon as you walk in the door, it began. It would it, it could begin with a, a tap on the ass or. It could begin with a get, loaning you a cigarette. It could begin with anything. But the game began as soon as you walked in the door. It was what you did that led to what, what you were going to wind up, how you were going to wind up living in there. You know, in 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 Alto, that when I was in there, there was there was 130 men in the dorm open dormitory, and. Uh, for, for the time that I was there, I believe the average the average white guy in there that wasn't either gay or uh, what they called in the bag back then, where somebody was holding their store goods and for them to prevent somebody from taking it or all, there was maybe three at the most whites in the dorm at the time that did not have to deal with those situations. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 where it began, and how you begin is how you end. I want you to say that again. How you begin is how you end. Yeah, because if you begin wrong, you're going to end wrong. You know, if you if you made the wrong move, move or you made the wrong decision or you didn't react the right way, that's going to be the beginning of the process of what you get put through. You know, and and and. You know how it is. Once you go down that hill, you can't get out of it. I had one of the brothers come on, man, from Alabama, did a bunch of time in Alabama. And to me, I pretty much said that, look, man, to me, I think Alabama's number one most dangerous prison. I think I said Georgia was number two. I've seen some videos out of there. White Mike sent me some videos where I'm just like, wow, man, this is some wild it's, shit going on. It's Yeah, it's a wild, wild west. And, uh... When I first went in, you know, you never heard anything about gangs or anything like that. You know, I think I think that uh, I began to be part of something years before there was everything, anything in the prison. But it was so under 
underground that you never even knew. You know, it was just a group of individuals that decided they weren't going to live like the rest of them and they weren't going to be treated like the rest of them. So it was just, you know, I mean, at the time of the 80s, man, I could probably count on my hands, two hands, the actual whites that I knew and respected in those prisons, you know? So so as, as time grew, we grew tight. And even over the years, we're still the same, same, same friends and same brothers, you know, that, that, that survived those situations and lived through those situations. But yet Georgia is something else because it's the South, you know, and uh, in the eighties, you know, it was, it was, it was, you're a cracker no matter what. And, uh, you know, no matter how you feel about them situations, uh, I tend to not. I, try, I tend to keep race out of the situations and really deal it deal with men as individuals. But it's always going to be in your situation in the South because you are white. So, you know, uh, I don't know, man. I tend to not agree with that word "cracker." So uh, it was a uh, it was violent from the beginning with me. I, I, I felt like with how they would feel, you know, if I if I was derogatory towards them. Um, I think that's that, that's really what began that, and uh, it's it, it 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 led to many many violent situations that had to be done and dealt with. And uh, when you're when you're two two white guys in the dorm with 120, and you have to become violent or stab somebody or whatever, you got to get it done. Let me ask you this: you, know, you got you got to get it done. You got to get you got to get it done to where they're not going to kill you. Let me ask you this question. Do they ever allege that you ever stab anybody in prison? Oh, they've alleged it, you know, probably 50, 60 times. Well, I happen to know a little bit about <clears throat> your background because I'm really good friends with one of your homeboys, right? Younger, younger right. dude. Kind right. of White Mike. Yeah, I'm good friends with White yeah, Mike. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good brother. He's still wild now, but he's like my son. <laughs> But he's a good one. He's a stand-up dude, man. Yeah. I, ask, I want to ask you a little bit about the Georgia prison system and, and gangs in there and unity. Um, not on no racial shit, but like you said, man, sometimes you got to stick together in order to survive, so to speak. So, Well, you know, the friend of mine, you know, the enemy of my friend of mine, how's the saying go? The friend of my enemy, a friend of my enemy, my enemy, is my friend, you know, it, so it, 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 when it comes to the gangs, when, when it's them against, when it's them, we pretty much can get together. When it's, when it's the, when it's the, the police or anything else, we, we can, we can come together on things. Um, outside of that, it's all about respect. You know, if, 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 if the gang, that you're dealing with is 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 somebody you respect and you can yeah you can get that you can get that agreement you know without race or anything else coming into the picture but this younger generation that's coming through they there is no structure on that you know they they just pretty much do whatever they want to do so sometimes it's you know you just you got to deal with them completely different they don't have no they don't really you know, it just depends on which gang it is, but you know, it's 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 really a mess right now. But back in the days, you know, it was all about respect, and uh, and respect was what it was. And if you held respect for that person, that person held respect for you, then it was no problem having a meeting of the minds, and things can get resolved a whole lot faster. But what's happening now is it's hard to get a meeting of the minds when you just ain't got the mind there. I respect what you're saying. So I want to talk a little bit about the Aryan Brotherhood in Georgia State prison system, right? Because some people are like, man, they got the Aryan Brotherhood down there. And I just thought that in my mind that like the kid I talked to from Alabama, he's like, man, they abuse white dudes in prison there. And I know that it's it's hard in Georgia, but they do have the Aryan Brotherhood they gang. In they there. do. They do. They do that. That's absolutely the truth. And that's why it's there. And it's not a big great big giant thing but it's it's there and those dudes don't they're not abused <laughs> i can guarantee you that 
they're not abused. Um, but it's, you know, it's like anything else. You've got to earn that right to be. You've got to earn that right to be there. So, you know, it is what it is. So it's a select group of individuals. So the Aryan Brotherhood, right? I know there's some allegations. I'm not saying they're true. But there's some allegations that you were part of the Aryan Brotherhood, right? Hey, yeah, there's there's allegations of it. <laughs> <laughs> were you known as a pretty tough dude in there? Well-respected? Yeah, I believe that's, that would be the truth to that, Chad. Um, I, 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 I earned all that. When you say you earned it all, let's talk about... We're going to get into some other stuff, too, but I want people to know what it's like, man, in Georgia prison. And we're going to talk a little bit about them dudes that killed that kid, Ahmad Aubrey. They're going to Georgia prison. But I wanted really yeah. people to get a glimpse of what made people respect you. I mean, you talked about 50 or 60 stabbings. Was there ever a time when you had to hit someone where you were like, damn, man, I really don't want to do this shit, but I got to do it? Yeah, there was many times like that. Many times like that. I mean... In there, in there, it's if you don't, then it's going to be a problem. But the thing about it is, the sacrifice that you have to make in doing that is the price that you pay of being white in prison and standing up for what we have a saying: "It's hard to be real." It's hard. It's hard to be real because to be real and to earn your respect. You're going to be the one that pays that price. When you do something, you're going to go down behind that wall for a longer period of time. You know, um, in the 33 years that I was in, I probably spent 17 or 18 of them behind the wall. They didn't, they would lock, they would lock me down or us down for years at a time and let them go days later or weeks later. That's what the difference is in Georgia prisons. When we stand up for ourselves, we're the bad guys. Even though we know and they know that that's the only way we can survive. And under the table, you know, they speak to you and say, yeah, we respect what you did, but, but, for the security of the institution, we're going to have to keep you locked down or whatever, whatever, while the ones that cause the problem get to walk around. That's the Georgia prison. And the Georgia prison for a white person is uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard. And I'm going to say, you know, that, that if I had to, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do the same damn thing again. Did you ever think you stabbed someone and, and you were like, damn, man, a dude's probably going to die. I'm never going to get out of prison. Like, this is probably, they might even give you the death penalty. Yeah. 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 Um, Many times. But you know what? At the time and most of the time, that's that's the price they had to pay. I never, you know, heard any, I never heard anybody they say crossed, that. They, they crossed that line. I didn't cross the line. They crossed the line. I've never, I've never ever done anything to somebody because I just wanted to. You, you know, to I did a, it. You ever have to stab a white dude in there? No, nah, I fight them. <laughs> no, nah, I fight them. I've, ne I've never, I've never had to go that way. But I've never put been put in that kind of position. I don't think that uh, I don't think there'd be a white dude that really wanted to come that way, Chad. I wish I wish we could talk a little more in depth. Do they say you had a high rank? Allegedly, everything we talk about is allegedly. Were you a high ranking yeah. AB in the Georgia State Prison System? Yeah, well, you know, I guess after thirty three years of doing something, you get pretty good at it. Uh, that's about all I can say about that. Uh, hey, man, I respect it. I understand. There's a lot of things you can't talk about, a lot of things you don't want to say. And you know what? You did a lot of time in prison. You're older. You're educated. You're not a dummy. And, and there's certain things that you just can't talk about. And some of the viewers are like, damn, man, I want the guy to – I really want him to get in depth. I really want to hear this. And But well, it's all right. Well, you know, man, you know, there's some things that if people understood that 
we're not, you know, we're not out there or, or, or out there to be, you know, some giant group of what, but it's about surviving inside these wa- inside those walls and having dignity and respect and understanding that we're not going to be subject to what they want them to, people to be. That, to me, I wouldn't call a gang. To me, I would just call that a brotherhood of a group of individuals that aren't going to tolerate being taken advantage of and didn't and aren't going to in any shape, form, or fashion. So, you know, that I think there's a difference between people that decide that they're going to be men and get together and do it together because they have to stand together or they're not going to exist. I, there's I, the, Other than having a group of people that do it to gain a big movement or something. I think that that's the, di- there's a difference there. You know, um, as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have three people that I know that I can trust under any circumstances than a thousand that ain't worth a shit, you know? So I, 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 I see named words being called out of gangs and this and that. But in my sense of it, it's more like family. It's more like, I know who you are. I know when, when the times come wrong and my back is against the wall, that you're going to be on that other side of me, no matter what, no matter what circumstances are called for. Those things are what I would call my brother. And there's been times where, where, you know, there's white guys that, you know, I'm not going to stand there and watch somebody be abused that's going to stand for himself. He don't have to be my brother. But if he stands for himself, I'm willing to stand with him. You know, those are, those are the the laws that I that I govern myself by and and inside those inside the walls those are the ones that I've lived by and still would do it out here you know if 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 something happened to my family or my brother's family or anybody else's family they stood up for themselves I'd be there I'm willing to I'm willing to go that way you know for that because that's that's all we got times in prison when you do that kind of time I you know I say this all the time you know, I hear people say, ah, oh, man, I ain't got no friends in prison. Man, I felt like I had brothers in prison. Like you said, I had man, dudes that I'll were with me. What, the people that I know that I trust the most are inside those walls. Because you don't know how loyal a person is or how, how much it means to be at the bottom and have nothing or be behind walls with fences and barbed wire and gates and 30,000 police in between it and still some kind of way it gets to you. You know, whether it's a pack of cigarettes, whether it's whatever, it gets to you, you know, and, and no matter what those situations are, you know those friends are going to be there. So I know, I, I know the hard times that, that you live through mean a lot to people. You can get out and you meet people out here or whatever, and that's just you, you just know them for whatever you see at that at that period. But when you live through it, it, it's more like somebody being in the military and going to war and going out in a field and fighting a battles and battles and battles, and you know who you can trust. You know who's you know who you there's a bond there. There's a loyalty there. There's a love there. There's a respect there. That's just those that those things can't be bought. They can't be sold. They can't be they can't be traded for. They're they're just earned, man. And, and you can't get away from it because it's there. I I trust and love those people more than anything in the world because I know what it's like to to face death. You know and and and. You know that th- those people are willing to be there and face death with you. 
you listen, can't ask that many, you can't ask that many people in life a lot of people don't understand that like i feel the same way i got a bunch of cousins out here and for real man at the end of the day my best friends my family my cousins my brothers those are the dudes that i was behind the wall with because like yeah. you said man them are the dudes yeah. i ate with the dudes yeah. i would die for they would die for me yeah we got busy yeah, together we, we did you know that's that's what it is you eat together you sleep together you 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 you, you guard each other you stay up with one eye open while the other sleeps i mean you pull rotations you guard the showers you all of those things man you have to trust somebody and trust is a trust is a very 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 hard thing to gain and a very easy thing to lose let me ask you this man that's a jewel you dropped are dudes just raping dudes in in the georgia state prison system are dudes just ra like man i'm just gonna rape this dude you know i don't know that it, that's yeah it happens it happens homosexuality in georgia prisons has really gone down as the gangs have become more relevant because of the laws of, of uh, you know, the laws that the people have, that's not really tolerated. However, you know, you have predators that if they decide to do something, but I got a, I got a, I got a true belief in something, man. You know, to be raped, there's got to, you got to be seeing signs that this is going. On. I mean, you know what I mean? If you didn't attack that situation from the beginning. Man, you just wanted to be raped, bro, as far as I'm concerned, because I don't think anybody in their right mind can't see that's been in prison, somebody, you know, watching them or, 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 or whatever. So, you know, in my view, if you if that happens to you, bro, you pretty much, man, you 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 had to have kind of wanted or or, or didn't didn't want to fight it or whatever, man, because I don't think anybody can rape me unless you knock me out in my sleep or something. Um, I'm gonna see that a mile away, you know, or and deal with it. But it happens. But I, it's not. I don't know if it's a if it's a dominating thing inside Georgia's prisons. Um, back in the '80s, when gays were, you know, when that stuff was like a like a shield of honor to certain people. To have a boy or whatever, um, you had a lot of that going on. But nowadays, it's not so it's not so relevant. But it still happens, you know. You said you spent a lot of time behind the wall, like solitary confinement, lockdown. High max, high max, pending investigations, um, SMUs, IMUs. Uh, anything that you could call that they could put you in to go past their laws of lockdown. That's yeah, I've been through all of that. Um, What's the longest time you spent in a cell? Twenty three hours a day, years. seven days a week. Six years. Tell the people what that's like. Did it, did it mess you up a little bit mentally? Yeah. It. it <laughs> you mean as they start as the walls start talking to you? Yeah, it happens about six, two and a half years. It, it, it creeps in in different ways, man, you know. But uh, I've seen I've seen people, you know, kill themselves behind that. Um, I've seen people actually lose their minds behind that. But, you know, my thing was just uh, stay occupied, stay doing something, stay, stay, stay focused on whatever you're doing. Um, that was my way of dealing with it. But there's been many times that I've I've paced the floors, you know, walked around in circles or did a thousand push-ups for the hell of it. But, you know, um, it's a mental thing. It's a mental thing. Some people aren't aren't mentally, can't mentally handle it. And then some people can. You know, I, I got to a point where, you know, after I after you close the door in 24 hours, it just becomes my home. You know, I just live and deal with it, but uh, some people can't handle it. But, you know, luckily I had the ability to to focus on other things and not let that sell. But it, it, it does. It has its days. It has its days when everything seems like it's, you know, uh, hitting it all at one time. You know, if it's death in the family or something else that hits you, the walls will really start closing in. Yeah, it's it's it's. 
it's a mental thing, though, you know. Um, as time goes by, you know, a- after about four years, it really becomes a daily routine. You know, that's all you remember, basically, is the cell and whatever they let you out at the rec call. That's your that, – that's about – that's about it. But, you know, when you're getting strip searched going out and shackled down in shackles to go down 10 feet to go to a yard that you get stripped again and shackled back again. And, you know, that's, that's yard call. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, but, uh, like, like I said earlier, I, I also got some videos, man, from over there, right? Like where yeah. just beat, brut- like brutally beating dudes and sales dudes around the ground. Like, ah, that's it. That's oh, it. yeah, 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 yeah. This, that's – Bro, that's a, that's 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 one of those that's one of those daily things in there, man. It's it's a it's really the wild wild west right now, with no guards, no officers, no no structure, no. Uh, it's just violence. So you better you better be ready, and you better hope you have enough respect or enough enough sense to work your way around that. Seems yeah. like you got to always be ready in Georgia State Prison. I want to talk to you a little bit about these cats that are getting ready to go to Georgia State Prison, the ones that killed that Ahmad Aubrey kid. What do you think is going to happen to them cats when they get there? Well, there's a lot of anger towards those guys in there. And I've heard whispers, you know, in many different situations if they – that's going to be a hard one for them. I, I mean, me personally, I don't even believe that they're going to let them in the general population. And if they do, they're doing it for a reason. Because those guys, uh, you know, I hate to say it for them, man. Um, it's not going to be easy, bro. Um, maybe, maybe they'll stand up and, uh, and, 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 earn enough respect for somebody to stand with them you know that's on them that's on what they do that's on how they act and what how they react to their situation but i think what george is going to do is they're going to give them a they're going to give them they're going to lock them down for for some years and maybe let the political stuff die down enough to where it'll get in their memory and maybe those guys can come out and uh and like I said, man, it's it's going to be a tough battle for them. It'd be almost like a battle that I had to do, go through in the 80s, probably for them. Um, it's not going to be easy, bro. I'm telling you that. Tell me about the battle you went through in the 80s. I want to know about it. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of like the it's kind of like the Amon Arbrick situation where when when you went in and you were white, uh. You were a cracker in Georgia, and there was no respect whatsoever for you. So the only way that you could get it was to make them respect you. And you had to. There was no ifs, ands, buts about it. And the prison that I went to in Alto, there was only one way that you come in and out of that. You either go in, come in and leave as a man, or you go in and you come out. And you can't have that dignity no more. And I think I think when I went in there, there was twenty five hundred people on the yard, and there was probably hundred and fifty white. And out of those hundred and fifty white, maybe ten, maybe ten were stand up, solid white dudes that can come out of that situation is with their dignity. And uh, yeah, I know all 10 of them. Um, there may be a few more than that, that I might've missed it were down the hill or something. But when I, where I went was, uh, was what they called the annex. And the annex was the place where they sent lifers and violent criminals and all the rest, but mainly the life sentences. So, you know, if you remember back in the time of the crack cocaine and all that, when they were sentencing all that, and in Georgia they had, you know, they had the little Miami-Atlanta wars going on. Um, They were incarcerating and throwing life sentences at people in Georgia for anything. So they, they, that, that annex, which was eight 
eight dormitories and, and the dormitories were open dormitories, beds all the way up and down the walls and skid rows and no guards, no, no, no officers. Um, so, you know, they, you'd come into diagnosis as a white guy, man, and they, you'd leave out of there and they'd march 20 or 30 of them over there to the annex and before, before the night, before the night was out, there might be three or four left in the dorm and then out of them three or four, maybe one might be standing on his own before it's over with. And then, you know, that, that next rotation will come in. But, you know, the one thing I can say is this. When those situations happen and the, and, and the whites were coming to the dorm, you know, another individual that earned his right to be there would, would step to every one of them, you know, and, and basically give them a heads up and tell them, all right, this, this, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And uh, this is what you got to do. And uh, if you didn't follow that, that's on you. But if you did, you stood a chance. You knew if you did, you had that one that told you that to be with you. But if you this. didn't, you know what it was. So you go to that and annex. You know. Did you get a knife huh. right? Did you get a knife right away? Oh, I got a knife first day I was there. How long did it take oh, before was, you stab somebody? Uh, about forty-eight hours. How many times did you stab them? They say a bunch. Did he try to stab you back? <laughs> he never got a chance. Did you ever get stabbed in there? Ever? No. 33 years. You made it all them 33 years and never got stabbed in there. So you're always first. You better be. You better be. You, you better be. You better be. If you're not first, you're going to be the one in the loser end of that one. You know, you bring a different perspective to the show because you've been in prison 33 years, right? I want people to know what it feels like. When you know in your mind, you're like, man, I'm going to stab this dude. Once you say that, I mean, as far as I've been concerned, once, I, once I'm once i committed, that's it. I'm committed. There's nothing changing my mind. This is what I'm doing. No, it's, that's it's, it. It's, it's something you just do. It's something, you know, and you, you know, after time, it's just instinct. You know that if you don't do that, then you wake up the next morning, you know what the consequences of them actions are. If you don't take that step and you take that initiative, then you're going to be the initiative. So, you know, in those, in those, in those things right there, man, that's, that's kind of like if you're going into a war, you know, and you're going into a battle and, and, and somebody comes up, you see him, you see him over there in the corner. If you don't get him over while he's got his head turned on, if you don't get him on that head or he don't see you, well, if he sees you, then, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's chance you're going to be got first, you know. So the best thing to do is to, to make sure that they don't know or they don't see or, or they don't they don't have the opportunity to to know that's going to happen. So, you know, in your mind. It's it's. It's it's a it's a tactical situation, you know. And once you reach those decisions, man, you already know what it is because it's it has to be done. It's instinct, you know. It's, it, if if it's not, then you know what the other end of the situation is. So, you know, it's just it's just part of something that you either you either have it or you don't, man. You know, you can't buy heart. You can't you can't buy. Uh, strength in, in in people. Some people, some people just just don't have it, man. You know, some people do. I, I didn't know I had it when I went into prison. I didn't know it was there. I was never in no situation like that. It was just, you know, I remember my dad telling me, you no, know, right before I went in, son, no matter what, just be a man. And it always, it always stuck into my brain. You know, no matter what, just be a man. And those there's times that I would that I sat behind and I wondered, man, I got to be the stupidest man in the world. But you know, at the, at the end of the day, man. So it was either you could have been the stupidest man in the world, or you could have been a dead man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt on that. Um, but you know, the dead man part don't it don't count when uh 
when they're sliding them pieces of paper up under the door, you know, when they're sliding them pieces of paper up under the door, they're or they're giving you those eight year set offs or the or the rest of it that comes with those with those situations, you know, or telling you that, you know, due to the nature of your due to the nature of your uh, institutional conduct or something like that, you know, that you can't be released in the population or, or due to the wardens, blah, 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 blah. You can't, you can't be released in the population, you know, and you think to yourself, man, damn, man. But you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. It has to be done. Uh, but you know, it, you still, <laughs> sometimes you have second thoughts. Let me ask you this, Jesse, you went to prison, a young man, were your parents alive when you walked out of prison? No, nah, just my mom. I lost my dad in 2016, man. I, you know, I, I never cried a day in prison till then. And then I, I, mean, I, I don't think I stopped for three days, bro. I understand. You know? man. How happy was your yeah. mother to see you, man? After after all them years, man. Yeah, she was extremely happy. Extremely happy. But you know, what's in there stays in there. What's out here now is my life. I'll never forget my friends in there. Never. Under any circumstances. However, I'm out here and uh, I have to live my life. And one thing that I got to do is do it the right way, you know. Um, what I learned inside is you can't go against the grain for easy for easy ways or easy this or easy that. You know, you just gotta you gotta you gotta find a way to fit in there and still maintain your your uh yourself, you know. So that's basically what I'm doing, you know, it and it it, it, it before I went in, I didn't have no work ethic or any any focus on life or what I was gonna do. I was just a kid, I didn't really give a shit. I just want to get high and have fun, you know, and I got high and I decided I never wanted to come down, you know, so I, so I, so I robbed, you know, and then one thing led to another, you know, but uh, getting out, it's a, uh, uh, basically, you know, I work, I come home and I go to sleep and I go back to work. I come home and go to sleep. And I go back to work. And I want to, it's a happy, it's the happiest I've ever been, bro. I want to walk you to the gate, man. I want to talk about what it was like. Because I can't, I did 18 years, bro. I can't even imagine what it's like to go in at 19 and come home at 53 or 54 after doing 33 years. There's no difference between 19 and, there's no difference between 19 and 33, Chad. Um, The only difference is just a little bit more time, bro. Uh, It's all the same. You you left it after 18 years, man. One day inside and freedom you know but 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 the experience that i felt luckily i got to a transition center and got a chance to work before i got out but i tell you man i was so nervous when my wife came to pick me up getting out the door because the guards harassed me so much just going out you know i thought i i you know my my wife come to the to the fence to see me you know and they made me back up and you know, stand over here and, you know, put me through all kinds of crazy crap before I did walk out. And then I walk out with a box in my hand and I get out the door, man, I'm so happy to be there. I just dropped the box on the street. <laughs> and uh, I called her on the phone and told her she was down the hill. I told her, you got to come get me. I ain't carrying this box up the hill, down this hill. But I was, it's a feeling that, you know, it's hard to explain. It's a hard, it's, it's hard to explain what you really feel because you really don't even know what you feel it's like a i can't believe it that i'm actually here and i'm free and there's nobody that's fixing to grab me and snatch me back and then as i drive down the road you know it kicks in a little bit more and it kicks in a little bit more that i'm actually sitting in a car with my wife let me let me ask you this because I know when I walked out, I know how I, I kind of felt the same way, but it, I felt like, wow, man, like it wasn't even 18 years. It didn't seem that no, long. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a saying sometimes that I tell, you know, I tell my wife, you know, she said, damn, you know, because we're the same age and we've been together since 
since you know high school and uh i tell her i say you know what man she said i'm 53 i feel i feel me you know my back hurts what i said i don't know what you're talking about because i'm just 19 <laughs> yeah because i don't feel the 53 years i don't feel the hey, 33 years in prison i'm so glad i you feel said like so glad I, I feel like i that. did because i've said this in videos i think and i've told my wife this and people ask me, man, how old are you? I said, man, I'm 24. That's how old I was when I went to prison. I still right. feel 24. I can walk right. in the gym right now, bro. I promise you this. Right. I, did, I did it joking around. And I I, yeah. I got on the bench. I asked the kid. I said, hey, how much do you think I can bench this 225? He's like, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe two, three times. And I just jumped on there and hit it 20 times, bro, without even warming up. I said, well, I still feel like thinking I'm about it. You've been, you've been doing it all them years. But, you know, it's, 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 it, the other thing that really, really, really – that the biggest thing that gets me is after all those years, you know, and you can walk into a gas station or something and know what everybody's doing in that gas station as soon as you walk in. And that's the weird thing that I, that I, that I realized because I can, I can, I can go in and buy a pack of cigarettes and I come out and tell my wife what each individual was doing in that, in that gas station and what their movements were. And that's that's weird because I didn't I didn't I didn't mentally do it. It was something that was it's just there. You know, I guess that's what you get in all the years of being in prison, your awareness of your surroundings. And I'm not losing, I thought I would lose it after, you know, a couple of weeks or something, but I, I don't, and you know, it's even in even in a Walmart or somewhere where there's lots of people. I still know where everybody's at and it's kind of strange, you know, um, that's, <laughs> I guess that's what you get for, for doing all the years. But, uh, that's, well, that's the, that's the strange part I had when I got out was, was how, how you see things different than you did before you came in. You know, you, you could tell bodies movements and tell people, I can pretty much tell whoever's bullshitting me, bullshitting me almost immediately. You know, I tell my wife, I was that first proof, you know, they're full of shit whatever and oh, what are you talking about you're so nice you know you just <laughs> you just see through it a mile <laughs> a mile away you know but other than not, that man you know. i'm not just saying this i say it all the time to my wife like you just said i'm like hey look this dude's doing that right there hey you see him you see what they're doing she's like why yeah what i didn't even see it how do you why do you pay attention yeah. to this shit? <laughs> yeah yeah and you know before i got on i never i never really paid attention to the police cars or anything you know and now out of instinct i don't know what it is but i, I i'm driving down the road and i drive like a grandma you know because i don't i don't i don't speed i don't do no reckless driving or any of that i kind of just try to get cruising through but they can't get within you know 50 yards of me before i see them or whatever i see them before and and it's kind of weird because you know i tell my wife oh, there's a cop over there behind that behind that tree i don't know yeah i guess it's something that you you just realize that uh, the only thing that I'm having a problem with is figuring out what their cars are, you know, because they change the cars so much. But I can still spot them so quickly. Um, let, me know, you, let me ask you a couple questions before we before we close the show, right? Your uh -huh. wife, did she you, – you knew her before prison? Did she stick it out with you? I mean, was there, she on visits? How'd that go? Well – yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There's another thing there, man, that you know that 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 I was blessed with. I don't know. I've always kept it real with her. But we 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 broke up when I first got locked. I mean, you know how it is. Kids come to prison or whatever, and uh, she went on her way. She got married, or whatever, and then she lived with somebody for a while. She got divorced, and then you know, I think it was 2006. She came back into my life and we got married in 2008 and she, you know, she rode with me the whole time, but, and we'd always really communicate or whatever, but we were friends, you know, we were, we were together before I went in and we, we've always had like a, a best friendship, you know, and a love, but I think it's more about, man, just being real, man. You it know, it's crazy. Um, my, huh? I, I was married too when I went to prison. Right. And I yeah. got out of prison and, you know, I had 40 years, my wife, you had to go her own way. So you got to go on with your life. And she did. 
and I got out. We reconnected. I don't know if you know this, but um, we got remarried mm. in July, and we just had uh, two twin boys. Man, that's awesome. On that's all. That's where the kids came from. December. Man, congratulations, dude. Yeah, that's 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 really crazy. You know, I got a little bit too old for that, but I wish it could have happened. But uh, it didn't. But that that that's you know what, man. I'm gonna tell you something, bro. And I and I say this very rarely to people, but people that go in and out of relationships or whatever, man. You know, in in those situations, if you're real and you're honest and you keep it all the way there, and it's there, it's never gonna go away, man. You know, and 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 I've always believed that that no matter what, if you're just if you're just real about all of that, man. No matter what in life and anything that happens, whether you're right or you're wrong just do the right thing or keep it real all the way on in those situations. It's going to be there, man. And I think that, uh, that's the way I've always been with my, with my wife. You know, I've always been loyal and real and, and, and I guess it's built a, a trust and loyalty, man, that, you know, you can't break that shit, man. And it correlates to when I'm fixed to get married again, bro, we're going to do it again out here to the, with the same pastor that married us in prison, you know, 15 years ago. Yeah, we're gonna have him come up, man. And, you know, hope God willing, he'll, he he's getting a little old, you know. But he said he's gonna do it for us. But we're gonna go ahead and do it again out here to enjoy that moment out here, as you should. But, yeah. So look, Jesse, I appreciate you coming on, man. Before we close, I know you had a lot of young dudes under you. A lot of dudes probably looked up to you. You were an old timer. You had been, you know, through a lot of things. People looked up to you in prison. I know guys like you. I've done time with guys like you. Where I'm like, hey, man, this is an older dude. We respect him and. You know, sometimes he was might have been the shot caller on the yard, the leader, whatever you might want to call him. But, you know, my show is designed to help kids from going to prison. Even dudes that got went to prison, got out, they write me and say, hey, man, your show reminds me of why I never want to go back. You don't want to go back, man. Give me a message. You know what I'd say to, yeah, what I would say to, you know, any kid is, listen, before you have to go through this to be, realize that you're a man or do anything else, only thing you really got to do is not only just think about the consequences, because I never thought about consequences, but you got to think about consequences to your actions. And the act the consequences, the actions are very, very, very hard. And if you happen to be Caucasian, you might as well multiply that by 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, depending on where you're at. But it's not easy. And, and and it's so easy to do the right thing, man. It, it really is. It's not hard. I wish I would have known, you know, 33 years ago what I know now. So anybody that thinks that this is cool or whatever, man, it's not cool, bro. It's not cool. It's not cool. It's not, it's not, it's na- 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 nothing, nothing that I could even say would I, would I ever want to do that again you know well, nothing you could put me in to do that for for somebody that's having problems or trouble out there in life right now man there's nothing out there that's worse than getting inside these walls because if you think you've got problems now they ain't even begun yet you know and 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 it's it's it, this it's not cool no matter how much you respect the old guys or how much you respect what they've been through or any of that other stuff, all that don't mean nothing. It's not worth it. You know, and, 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 and I'm I, I honest, honest to God, man, that's, that's a serious issue right there with these younger generations, man, that, that think that, that this is a cool thing to be or, or to be part of or be wanting to be. Man, you don't even want to go through what it takes to be there. I hear you, man. You don't even start, you know. I hear you. Listen, man, I, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show. I got a couple of videos that YouTube probably won't let me put up from the Georgia prison system. I'm going to just tell people, man, if you watch this video all the way through, hit me up on Facebook, hit me up on an email, yeah. and I'll send them the yeah. videos personally, man, so they can see what's yeah, really going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know, the guy that the other guy that you communicate with, he's going through a little rough things right now. But why am I? He's a, he's a, he's a soldier, bro. He's a soldier. He's a soldier, man. You know, sometimes you know when it when you're young, you kind of <laughs> you kind of you kind of got a little bit of don't give a crap in you. But uh, he's a good one. He's a good guy, man. Uh, he um, is. I like the dude. He is a good dude. And he, but he better get he's it right. He's a solid man. dude. He's a solid dude, man. And, he, and you know, at the end of the day, 
I hate to say it, but uh, you know, he's he's gonna be there regardless of what. And I hate to say what he's got to go through, you know. Now, you know, we're we're there, we're with him. Well, listen, brother, man, I'm just I'm gonna close the show. Tell you I appreciate you. Tell everybody hit that. Subscribe. Keep in touch with me, man. Keep in touch with me, man. Keep keep me posted on them kids, man. I will, uh, man. We'll stay in contact, man. I like you, man. You you're all right. Yeah, man. no matter you no matter up. what, bro, it's, it's always there, man. No matter what, it's always there, bro. Man, I appreciate you. I'm gonna close out, man. All right. Tell everybody hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, blood on the razor wire TV with respect. Until tomorrow. <laughs>